Time to meet the men from the ministry. We're about to hear more low notes in high places from Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. For the staff of the General Assistance Department, their office in Whitehall is a place beset with pressures and problems. It's a welcome break when some task takes them outdoors, even if it's only as far as a nearby building site. Morning, ma'am. Ah, oh, morning, too. And what a beautiful morning it is. <laughs> so this is the new block you're keeping an eye on, eh? For the Ministry of Social Security, I gather. That's right. They're calling it Wilson Towers. Oh. <laughs> Don't tell me it's leading to the left. <laughs> no, it's shaped like a sauce bottle. Oh. Uh, the trouble is, this block should have been finished months ago. The workmen are well behind schedule. Yes, well, you were wise to call me in. I'm something of an expert on building matters, you know. Oh, yes. Yes, I put a new handle on our greenhouse door, you know. <laughs> the men just don't seem to work, that's the trouble. They don't want to get on with it. They have a marvellous gadget in Russia, I hear, for speeding up work and production. Oh, what's that? I think it's called a whip. <laughs> Good Lord, that workman's got two spades in his hand. Yes, and the ace of diamonds. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's nearly 11 o'clock and nobody's started work yet. I'll soon sort this lot out. <clears throat> Good. I say, my man, I, uh, I want a word with you. Uh, morning, sir. Uh, you'll be after doing what? Uh, my name's Lennox Brown. We're ministry men. We're here to advise and consult. We're assisting the Department of Environment to safeguard aesthetic and ecological aspects of new London building. Current inertia and deceleration on this project indicate a marked shortfall on the completion program as forecast. Be chappers and Picara, would just mind speaking English? <laughs> this skyscraper block should be finished by now, but the inside's hardly touched. I suppose you'll say your schedule is too tight. Not at all. I've always walked like this. <laughs> Oh, glory, we're getting nowhere with this fellow. Uh, uh, you, you'd best be after having a word with Mr. Makepeace. Now, he runs things around here. Oh, yeah. Hey, Cyril. Oh, him. He's their leader, he? a real troublemaker. Last week, he demanded padded handles on all picks and shovels. <laughs> padded handles? Whatever for? So they'd be softer for the men to lean on. <laughs> uh, here's Mr. Makepeace now, sir. What is it you want? My colleague and I would like to discuss ways and means of speeding up work on this site. Is that so? Yes. For instance, couldn't your men climb the ladder with more than one brick at a time? <laughs> and then there's the question of tea breaks, you know. Now, how many do you have here? Only two. What's wrong with that? Two tea breaks. Oh, yes, well, that seems reasonable enough, yes. But one, he means two every hour. Now, look here, you've not come to interfere and make trouble, have you? Uh, uh, oh, no, certainly not. Good. We... Now, clear off the pair on you. Mm. And if you turn up here again, I'll I'll shove you both in that concrete mixer. Well, oh. we'll go at once. It's been a most useful chat, Mr. Makepeace. Yes. Uh, let's get back to the office, one. <laughs> Mildred will make us a nice cup of tea. Good night. <laughs> Pinstripe parasites. They'll not be back here in hurry. Quite right, sir. And if they do come back, they'll not see me. I'll shut me eyes. <laughs> Here, I'll throw this brick at them. Show them I mean what I say. There! No! Nice one, Cyril. <laughs> there, there, Mr. Lamb. You sit back and relax. What an awful experience. Those workmen are terribly difficult, Mildred. They're a really tough mob. Mind you, we took a tough line with them, you know. Oh, my word, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I wasn't standing any nonsense. Yes, we certainly put them in their place. No. How did you get this black eye, then? Yeah, did, oh, uh, well, I, uh, I bumped into some workmen with hods of bricks. Yes, there are some awkward hods about there. <laughs> <laughs> this building business is fraught with problems, you know. Still, we've done rather well with that other development. That's all gone very smoothly. What development's that, sir? The new recreational centre for MPs. You know those buildings at the foot of Whitehall? They're open already, Mildred. There are Turkish baths, squash courts, and saunas. Cost a fortune, you know. Oh, not that it matters. I mean, it's all public money. Mm. <laughs> we did a really good job there. Mm. We spotted the plans weren't right, and we redesigned the whole thing. Well done. Mm. The permanent undersecretary should be pleased for once. Well, he should be, but you never know with Sir Gregory. He's such an old villain. 
Hello? Uh, Someone talking about me? Uh, no, Sir Gregory, we were talking about another old villain. <laughs> Hello, Sir Gregory. Hello, hello. The MP's recreational centre is open, I hear. Indeed it is. We can take credit for that, Sir Gregory. Oh, you can, can you? We made quite a few adjustments to the original plan. Is that so? Quite a few adjustments, eh? That is correct, sir. <laughs> no, Lennox Brown, it is very far from correct. Oh. Thanks to you, the changing rooms are on one side of Whitehall and the baths are on the other. <laughs> Are on the yes, with the result that MPs are forced to run across the road wearing nothing but a, a towel and a worried look. <laughs> oh, dear. Very awkward, Sir Gregory. Awkward? It's outrageous. The Chancellor of the Exchequer was crossing the road for a bath and his towel got caught in a passing scooter. Oh. <laughs> now the Chancellor's been run in for streaking. <laughs> dear me. Well, he's furious, of course. The whole of Whitehall saw his predicament. <laughs> You incompetent, bungling, bird-brained idiots. Well, Sir Gregory, I mean, just because we make a tiny slip-up now and then... Now and yeah. then, Lennox Brown, every task you're given, no matter how simple, no matter how small, is in the end bungled and botched. No, this department is a permanent disaster area, and I'm fed up with it, fed up! Have I made myself plain? If you haven't, someone did. <laughs> and you, Miss Mervyn, stop muttering. You're no better than these two. That's an awful thing to say. Well, it was thanks to your typing error that the President of Bosnia was described in a welcoming address as a very impotent person. <laughs> I used to think this office was the bottom, but since then the standard's gone down. You're useless, all of you, useless. Useless? You're no use at all, except as a horrible example. Sir Gregory, there are limits to the abuse we can take, you know. Even a worm will turn. Well, what if it does? It's just as hopeless on the other side. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to stand here and put up with it. Indeed you don't, Lennox Brown. You can go any time, all of you. Oh. But while you're here, you'll make some attempt to do things properly. What about this new building for the Social Security people? Uh, Wilson Towers, sir. We've asked the workmen to speed things up. We suggested fewer tea breaks. Fewer tea breaks? Yes. You're to inform them that all tea breaks will cease until the building's completed. Oh, it, you mean you want us to tell them, Sir Gregory? Naturally. And another thing, I've had a complaint from the Foreign Secretary. He fears that people on the top floor of this skyscraper will be able to look into the Foreign Office washroom. They could see staff powdering their noses and putting on their makeup. Oh, dear, we wouldn't want the girls to be embarrassed. It's the men's washroom that's involved. <laughs> Well, what do you want us to do, sir? No, go up on the roof of Wilson Tires, take a pair of binoculars. Oh. And make sure it doesn't overlook anything it shouldn't overlook. Exactly. Yes. And if it does, the whole building will have to come down. Well, isn't that rather ruthless, Sir Gregor? I am ruthless, Lennox Brown. Yeah. Just remember that. Strange man. He's like Jekyll and Hyde, isn't he? Half the time he's difficult and irritable and quite unpleasant. Then something snaps and he really turns nasty. <laughs> I don't mind going up to the top of Wilson Towers, but how are we going to tell the workmen they can't have any more tea breaks? Will you tell them one? By all means. I'm not afraid of them. Uh, on the other hand, of course, a, a written memo might be better. <laughs> yeah. it'll, uh, it'll carry more weight, you see. You mean hand it to them in writing? Uh, not exactly hand it to them. Uh, <laughs> no, I think we'd do better to post it. I'll dictate a note and it can go off today. House, sir. Yes. And can I come on the roof of Wilson Towers? I'd love to see the view. But I thought you couldn't stand heights. You get vertigo if you wear high heels. <laughs> well, it, I'll be all right, sir, as long as I don't go near the edge. Yes, very well. Then I have to go to the housing department tomorrow morning, but we'll all meet on the building side in the afternoon at three o'clock. <laughs> It's gone three, and no sign of Mr. Lamb yet. Oh, he'll turn up, Mildred. Yeah. Have you got the binoculars, sir? Uh, no, no, but I've got a telescope. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it's the one I used in that play about Nelson for the civil service drama group. Here yeah. I am. Oh. Sorry I'm late, but I had to buy some potatoes to take home for Mrs. Bradbury. Right, well, come along then. Let's get up on the roof. Do we have to walk up 26 flights of stairs, sir? No, 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 Mildred. We couldn't even if we wanted to. The stairs aren't built yet. The only way up and down is by this workman's lift. Well, shouldn't we ask their permission? No! <laughs> I mean, uh, there's no need to disturb them. I'm sure they're all very busy. I mm. see one. There's mm. that Mr. Mate piece over there. Come along, too. Press the button. The lift will take us straight up to the roof. Right. Come 
I say, hold on to your bowler hat, Ron. It's very blowy up here. What a blooming, fabulous view. I can see the whole of London. There's St. Paul's. Oh, and I can see the Tower of London. Oh, and I can see Mrs. Bradby's. Mrs. Bradby's what? I say, I say, I can see our offices through my telescope. By Jove, there's old Crawley, all alone in his room. Little does he know he's being watched. Good Lord. What is he doing with that paper cup? My word, you'll never believe what he's trying to balance it on. <laughs> Good grief, he's done it. Crawley's balancing a cup on the end of his nose. <laughs> and you always said he had no talent. <laughs> office, sir? Yes, I can see right in there. No, there's nothing unusual. No, all the top brass sleeping at their desks. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute, there's one chap chasing his secretary round and round the table. Ah, uh, oh, no, 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 she's chasing him. <laughs> Hi, Joe. What about this problem, man? Can you see into the men's room? Uh, no, no, you can see the windows, but you can't look in. They've got little chintz curtains patterned with pansies. Say, it's fun up here, isn't it? I think those workmen are jolly lucky to work in a place like this. I can't think why they're always moaning and going slow. And I'll tell you this, O'Ligan, if them pinstripe layabouts comes here today trying to tell us what to do, I'll give them a knuckle sandwich. Quite right, sir. Oh, uh, this letter has just come for you. Letter? Oh, well, let's have it then. My old mother had a letter once, you know. She was so proud, she never opened it. I didn't want to spoil the envelope, you see. Why, heck? Oh, is it bad news, sir? This letter's from their ministry swine, ordering us to stop all tea breaks. No, I can't believe it. And if I was able to read, I'd only believe it if I read it. How dare they stop our tea breaks? Boy, heck, that does it. Tell the lads. Oh, that I will. Oh, tell the lads what? Everybody out. Oh, because you mean we'll strike. Oh, you're quick, oh, hooligan. I'll give you that. I want every man out of here, double quick. Get them down off the scaffolding, switch off the power for the drills and the lift. Nothing moves on this side till we get our tea breaks. You're right there. We'll stay out forever if it takes six months. Uh, we'll show them ministry twits sitting in their plush offices. They don't know what it's like on a building. <laughs> Oh, well, time to go home, I suppose. Uh, press the button to the lift middle, will you? And we'll be on our way. Party hi, sir. Oh, I have enjoyed it up here, Ron. Yes. This marvellous view. Mm. I feel I could almost stay longer. <laughs> the lift's not coming, sir. And the light doesn't go on when I press the button. Oh, I'll do it, Mildred. Perhaps you haven't got the knack. Oh. <laughs> well, you're right. It doesn't go on. The whole thing's dead. Almost as if the power were cut off. I say, Ron, it's deserted down there. There's no one moving on the site. Good grief. They've packed up work for the day. They must have turned off the power when they went. Oh, that's awkward. We'll have to go down the stairs. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lamb, there aren't any stairs, remember? Oh. Just a blooming grey hole where the stairs are going to be. Without that lift, there's no way down. We'd better shout for help. Oh, save your breath. We're 400 feet above the traffic. No one would hear us. Blimey, we're stuck here for the night. Well, I'm not staying here all night. We must wave something white and uh, attract attention. Good idea. I'll nip down and buy a flag. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be daft, to you? Look, we'll have to improvise. Now, let's see. Uh, something large and white. Uh, your shirt will do. My shirt? I'm not taking my shirt off. If you don't take it off, we'll wave it about with you still inside it. <laughs> now, listen, to Listen, I'm in charge here. Just give me the shirt. Come on. Now, I'll wave it about. You two keep your eyes open and see if anybody spots it. And perhaps it might be worth shouting. Uh, are you ready? Yep. Right. Help! 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 It's incredible, isn't it? All that effort and no one saw us or heard us. Well, practically no one. That chap at the foreign office noticed you were waving. Fat lot of help he was. All he did was wave back. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's nothing for it. We are here for the night. Well, as the workmen left early, let's hope they get here early in the morning. Yes, well, we'll just have to grin and bear it, I suppose. <sighs> now, we'd better make some rude sleeping arrangements. Do what? <laughs> 
Don't be silly, Mildred. You're safe with Mr. Lamb and myself. We are both gentlemen, you know. Hmm. <laughs> yes, it, it could be quite an experience sleeping up here in the open air. Well, I mean, at least it's a fine night. <laughs> oh, dear, we didn't bring our umbrellas. <laughs> night, sir. Did you get any sleep at all? No, not really, Mildred, no, no. The wind kept me awake. Oh, it's because you had no supper. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Lamb? I didn't dare go to sleep. Why ever not? With no wall over there, 400 feet up. I sleepwalk, you see. If I dropped off, I might have dropped off. <laughs> well, the workman will be here soon. You keep a lookout, too. I'm going to wash my face in this puddle. <laughs> must look smart when they get here. Thank heavens, it's almost over. I really can't understand it, Mildred. Eleven o'clock and still no sign of the builders. That looks like a crowd down there, just outside the gate. Have a look through your telescope, Mr. Lennox Brown. Yes, wait a minute. Uh, by Jove, yes, it's a, it's a bunch of workmen. Wait a minute, they're carrying banners and placards. What do they say, sir? No tea breaks, no work. Good grief. They're on strike. Yeah. Do you realise what that means? Yes, they don't like us stopping their tea breaks. <laughs> Not just that. We're trapped up here till they go back to work. And they won't do that till the tea ban's lifted. Well, I suppose you'd better give in, Mum. Let them have their tea breaks. Well, how can I do that when I'm stuck up here? Oh, haven't you grasped it yet? We're on this roof till the end of the strike. Oh, but that could take days. Days? Oh, the last building strike went on for nine months. No, no. <laughs> oh, now then, now, now, stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, please. Stop it, both of you. Now, our survival will depend on keeping calm and organising ourselves till someone guesses we're up here. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Have we got any food? Well, I've got a piece of chewing gum in my pocket. It's only half chewed, and I could get the fluff off it. <laughs> and, uh, two, you have those potatoes you brought for your landlady. Oh, so I have. Yes. That's good, isn't it? We can have chips today, mashed tomorrow, fried next day. And how are we going to cook them? Jackets on Friday. And... Oh, you don't mean we eat them raw. But we've no alternative, have we? I'll ration them out day by day. And we'll need protein. Oh. Oh, yes. Now, perhaps we could catch a pigeon <laughs> using a piece of string in my bowl of hand. But what are we going to drink? I'm thirsty. We'll trap rainwater in Mr. Lamb's bowl of hat. But won't that shrink it, Mum? Or better still, we'll use that big tarpaulin. Now, I'll make a rude shelter with scaffolding poles and that corrugated sheet. Raw potatoes could upset my tummy. Oh, nonsense. On reflection, it won't be for long. The Ministry can't function without us, can it? I mean, those spots we're missing and they'll put two and two together. Oh, yes, they're, they're probably in a state at the office already. Be with you in a moment, Miss Lusty. I just want a word with Mr. Lamb. Morning, Mr. Lamb. He, oh, he's not here. Uh, Mr. Lennox Brown? Cooey! Ah, Crawley. You're looking for them, too. Uh, they're not here, Sir Gregory. Uh, nor is Miss Murphy. Very strange. I, I know they're always late, but never as late as this. Oh, it's most odd, sir. Yeah, probably out on the tiles last night. <laughs> well, I doubt it. Mr. Lamb never goes to bed late. Except sometimes he does stay up for the nine o'clock news. <laughs> on the other hand, I had occasion to upbraid them yesterday. I gave them a good dressing down. Oh, I heard you, sir, from the office next door. That's Sir Gregory, I said, giving them a piece of his what's-his-name. And Lennox Brown got on his high horse. We, we don't have to stay here, he said. By Jove, perhaps they've left. Walked off in a huff. Oh, well, if they have, sir, I'm sure they'll come back. Yeah. Yes, I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> They'll return, no doubt, with their tails between their legs. They won't stay out in the cold for long. It's not very flattering, is it? Five days and no one's missed us. <laughs> they will, Mildred, they will. What exactly are you doing, sir, with all that burning paper? I was a boy scout, you know. Some years ago, yes. 
So having collected all the paper we could muster, I ignited it by focusing the sun through my glasses. Well, yes, sir, I saw you, but why? Well, don't you see? To make a change from raw potato. I'm cooking this briefcase. <laughs> in the briefcase. Well, it's soft leather, you see. I mean, it should taste just like a canteen steak. <laughs> well, I never saw a steak with a zip fastener before. <laughs> just keep your chin up, Mildred, and fix that tarpaulin. Oh, dear me, that fire didn't last very long. Where is Mr. Lamb, by the way? He went off on his own to the other end of the roof. Great news, man. I can see a way to escape. Oh. We must get lots of bits of paper and write help and please rescue us and drop them all over the edge. By Jove, too, you've hit it there. <laughs> you've hit it. Why didn't we think of that before? Uh, one little snag, sir. No? You just collected all the paper we had and burnt it. <laughs> oh, glory. Oh, one, how could you do such a thing? It was our only chance. Oh, be quiet, too, oh. and pull yourself together, both of you. They're bound to have missed us at the office by now. They'll be sending out search parties. So Gregory must be sick with worry. <laughs> They've been gone for over a week, Crawley. I really believe they've left us for good. So you don't think they'll come back with their what's his names between their what's his names? No! <laughs> no, I must have mortally offended them. <laughs> I can't think why I didn't do it before. Have a cigar, my dear fellow. Let's celebrate. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> if uh, Mr. Lennox Brown and Mr. Lamb aren't coming back, someone will have to take their place, won't I? Hmm? <laughs> I mean, uh, well, their jobs are vacant. By Thunder Crawley, I don't see why you shouldn't take over. Unofficially, of course, till the selection board confirm your appointment. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll do that, sir, once they see my enormous what's-his-name. <laughs> yes, well, your first task will be sorting out the builders at Wilson Tires. Thanks to Lennox Brown's bungling, they're out on strike. Oh, leave it to me, sir. I'll deal with them. And, um, if I'm moving into this office, I'd like to make a few changes. I'm glad to hear it. You're trembling, Mr. Lennox Brown. Whatever can you see through your telescope? I could see Crawley in our office. Eh? Yes, he's putting up some sort of graph and taking down my bunny girl calendar. <laughs> and he's putting his feet up on my desk. It's a mirage, like people see in the desert when they're on the run from the British Legion. <laughs> it's not a mirage, Mildred. Here's the telescope. See for yourself. Here, yeah, you're right. Creepy Crawley's drinking tea from our pot. No. He might at least have used a cup. <laughs> Sir Gregory's just come in. He seems to be laughing. Now I've seen everything. Not quite, Mildred. If you look over there... You'll see Mr. Lamb carving out his will on the concrete. <laughs> Poor soul. Do you think he's cracked? I've thought so for years. <laughs> you all right, Mr. Lamb? This is the end. The end, do you hear? There's only one potato left. And his eyes seem to follow me everywhere. <laughs> Steady to, steady. It's no use, don't you see that? We'll all be transferred to that great ministry in the sky. Two. He's right, sir. We done well to hang on for a fortnight. We can't go on much longer. Well, now, now, this won't do, this won't do. Look, we'll have a sing-song to keep up our spirits. A sing-song? Yes, yes. Now, come along with me, now. We're sitting on top of the world. <laughs> Well done, Crawley. So you settled a workman's strike after only a month. Oh, yes, Sir Gregory. <laughs> There's just one way to deal with these troublemakers. I insisted they had more tea breaks, higher wages and shorter hours. I drive a hard bargain, you know. I really do. And they're back at work this morning. I can see the first lift going up now with a couple of workmen. That's the way to do things, what? Right? Did you enjoy your strike then, Cyril? Oh, well, I felt like a bit of a change, so I nipped down the Riviera. Spent a few days in Monty. What about you, our hooligan? Oh, sure, and I fancied a change and all. So I worked for the building site down Lewisham Way. Oh. <laughs> well, now we're back, we best clean up this roof. I'll bet there's some rubbish left lying around. Oh, here we are at the top, then. Open the gate. I'll go first. I dare say the rain's been... Yeah! What is it, Cyril? Stay where you are, O hooligan. Don't look. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs>
And now the rest of the news. Three civil servants were today brought down from a London skyscraper block after spending a month on the roof. <laughs> it was thought at first they'd been trapped there, but a ministry spokesman, Sir Gregory Pitkin, later denied this. He said no civil servant could be that stupid. <laughs> the three had, in fact, been researching the effects of exposure on the human frame. <laughs> they had to assess the process of human deterioration. And the two men had been chosen because they were halfway there to start with. <laughs> As they left the roof this morning, one man, Derek Lennox Brown, was seen to be eating his bowler hat. <laughs> the other, Richard Lamb, was running round with a straw in his mouth shouting, I'm a bird, I nest in high places. <laughs> the third civil servant, Miss Mildred Murfin, explained that they'd lived on a bag of potatoes. It hadn't been pleasant, but they were thankful for small Murphys. <laughs> It's just been announced that all three will be decorated by the League of Scientists for their courage in the cause of research. Medals will be presented by their president at next month's annual dinner. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I repeat that these gallant persons well deserve the medals I have so graciously bestowed upon them. Graciously, just because I'm wearing a low-cut dress, he took ten minutes putting mine on. <laughs> May I commend you once again, all of you, on your very great courage and endurance. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We are proud to have pushed back the frontiers of knowledge. To think you could have left that roof at any time. What? We could have left the roof? Well, of course, by switching the lift to automatic. <laughs> that way it works off a battery. You mean we weren't really trapped at all? We didn't have to stay there? It was all for nothing? Steady to no, keep calm. I can't stand it. I don't believe it. To I, put no, the president no, down. No, Let him go to Hitting the roof as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley and John Graham. The programme was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. Mm -hmm.